Okay, sounds good. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Frankie Slauson Show, and welcome to, as we continue, the Frankie's Icons of Pop Culture series. And today we go musical. And it's been a while since I've talked to a musician, but this uh, weekend, actually, I get to talk to two. And it's kind of funny because with this guest and the guest that I have tomorrow, uh, they all they both connect. Tomorrow, they're, they're mystery guests here. I get to talk to uh, the lead singer of uh, Wild Cherry. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, 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 Bobby. I I I used to play with Bobby. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's why I think it's kind of neat how uh, this whole thing kind of connects. I I wish I could have got yeah. you guys bought on at the same time, but that would have been kind of neat. But uh, but uh, they yeah, yeah. but uh, kind of sad that it just kind of he's busy. You know, he has stuff to do today, and it, and it just worked out with you today. So yeah, anyway. Yeah. Cool. Who I have with me today, if you remember some of the you know stuff from the 80s, uh, this guy racked up a bunch of hits uh, with the song called Aaliyah, Do You Compute, I Can't Hear You, and also the song that I think a lot of people are really familiar with was uh, Love Is Like a Rock. I have with me mm-hmm. Mr. Musician Donnie Iris. Welcome to the show. Hey. How you doing, Frankie? Thanks for having me on your show, man. Hey, it's a pleasure to uh, to talk to you. I mean, uh, this is uh, this is definitely a rare treat, and I say that a lot about a lot of big guests because you are a big guest. You are somebody who's had a, a <laughs> legendary career, and uh, I'm just amazed that you actually had the time to uh, talk to me today. Well, I said uh, any time, Frankie. I'm glad you set this up. Uh, I like doing these type of things, especially. Uh, are you out of uh, Minnesota? Is that correct? Yep, Minnesota. All right, all right. <laughs> Sounds good. We've we've done a uh, we've done a couple shows up there back in the '80s, and uh, loved it. We had a great time up there. I suppose uh, you probably did most of the uh, Minneapolis St. Paul area. I suppose. Yeah, yeah, we did. I think a couple of shows in Minneapolis, St. Paul. I think we uh, we might have opened. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, we might have opened for Hall and Oates up there at one oh, point. Wow. I'm not oh. per, I'm not positive, but I think that's uh, that's what we did there. Either that, or it could have been even uh, even Lover Boy. I, oh, I can't sure. remember for <laughs> sure exactly what it was. There was a couple times we played in your state. Oh sure. And, and, you know, what would be kind of nice is to uh, see uh, where I live. I see I don't live in Minneapolis, St. Paul area. I live in, uh, right now currently in northern Minnesota, even though uh, in, uh-huh. about a, in about a week I'll be moving to South Dakota. But most of my life mm-hmm. I've lived in northwestern Minnesota. And I wish, you know, a lot of, the, a lot of the, uh, these iconic bands. I mean, we have, uh, well, I guess our, our state's known for, like, Moon Dance Jam and stuff. But uh, we, mm-hmm. but it would be nice to have some, you know, like yourself, were to come up to, to northern Minnesota here. Like we got, you know, a few auditoriums that could ha- that could hold you, you know, uh-huh. do a show, do a show yeah. or two. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. But uh, yeah, it's it's really uh, cool to have you on. And uh, uh, I guess the first question is, uh, how did you get started uh, with music? Well, I'll tell you what. It started when I was uh, I was very young. I was just a kid, and uh, my mother uh, my mother always encouraged me to to, uh, to sing and get into music. Even when I was little, 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 um, and we had a we had a a, a a piano in our basement, and we uh, she would take me down there and teach me songs, and uh, kind of like taught me the basics to singing way back when. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, that's, and of course, I didn't really want to do that. I just wanted to go out and play baseball with my buddies. Oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> but, um, uh, but I'm glad she did that. But, and it just uh, kept me interested, uh, it, not so much in high school, because, um, you know, at, at, at 12 years old, your voice is changing. You don't know what the heck's going to happen when you're singing. Oh sure, and uh, and so that you know, after a few years, after the, right around the time that my voice was changing, I just thought, no, no, I'm not going to sing for anybody. Um, and then finally, when the, the when the voice change settled down, I could count on hitting the notes that I was actually trying to hit. Um, it uh, you know it changed my attitude again, so I wanted to get back into it. Oh, so basically, I mean, that's how it started for me. Oh wow, okay. And did uh, you did yeah. you did you have like a lot of inspiration like any any of the uh, any like Buddy Holly or Richie Valens or somebody that inspired you to? Uh, oh keep yeah, a yeah, yeah. Way back, uh, you know, when I first started singing. I mean, I was brought up 
uh, early on uh, liking people like uh, that my mother was was more into, which would have been like the uh, the Tony Bennett's and, uh, and the Sinatras and people like that. Sure. But when uh, but when Buddy Holly and Elvis and and you know all those people came along in the fifties, um, you know rock and roll was where everything was headed, and and of course me and everybody else who was my age loved it and uh you know that that kind of inspired me to start playing guitar and backing my, myself up uh in um you know in, in bands okay. so uh yeah i mean uh, that, that's what happened with me it was early on it was with the type stuff and then, and then we got into the rock and roll oh that's cool uh and, and uh yeah. eventually your high school band uh was it the the Jaegers or something like that that uh, got you into uh, like was well, that the name uh, of your high school band or something? Or? I had a couple of couple of bands early on that um, um, that I played with, but I didn't actually really start playing professionally and for a living until the Jaggers, and that was that would have been that's who you're talking about. Yeah. that would have been like sixty four, maybe something like that. Sure. Sixty three. Um, yeah, that's that's what started it all, and that's what that's when I first went out on the road as a musician, and you know, pretty much did that for the you know f- forever. That, that was my uh, that was my calling, I guess. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, the Jaggers was <laughs> the first group I had any real success with. Yeah, and it was kind of nice because uh, you were able to finally get your you know to see how talented you really are. You know, you know a lot of people were able to see you perform and. And did you get some good reviews on how you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, uh, that's what happened. And, and we got, um, you know, the thing, the thing about it, when when, when you're in a band like that and you're writing songs, recording songs, and that, that's, what, that's what really gets you out there to, to, the, to the entire country. And that's what happened with the Jaggers. I mean, we, we did uh, uh, shows in bars, for years before we had a hit with uh, with the rapper, which was like 1970, uh-huh. so it was from 63 all the way up to 70 before we had anything really that, that hit nationally. Uh, before that, I mean, we had uh, we were more like an R&D band, and we did some records with Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff out of Philadelphia. Okay. Um, one was called uh, uh, "We Went to Different Schools Together." And the other one was um, introducing the Jaggers. So, um, yeah, we um, uh, we did a couple of records with uh, with those two guys, and they had a lot of success with bands like the OJ's and people like that back in like '68, somewhere around there. So but, what? Uh, okay. The coming of the Jaggers was the rapper. And and, and uh, were you kind of amazed, like like when you started to hear your your songs on the radio, especially the rapper when that was the first song that you ever had? Oh that, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure, man. And that was just amazing to <laughs> you know driving in my car and hearing our song on the radio <laughs> in in stations all over the place. And I remember uh, we used to be able to get radio stations out of New York and even in Chicago, WLS out of Chicago. Do you remember that radio station? I, I believe my, my parents have told me about that station before. Yeah, yeah, it was like an AM station. It was all AM for the most part back then, and, and at night you could get those stations here and all the way here in Pittsburgh uh, <laughs> from stations like that, and they would be playing the rapper, man. It was, it was awesome. It was just awesome to hear that stuff. Did you ever call like a station up and, and request your own song? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never done that, man. But, uh, that's a pretty good one. I like that. Thank you. I like that. Well, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm sure somebody has before or whatever, just uh, to try it out to see if uh, see if it'd work at all. Just say don't don't yeah, even say who you are, and just say yeah, I'd like to hear my own song, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get all your family to call you and he say tell her, tell them to play my song. Yeah. <laughs> your mother and all your aunts and uncles. <laughs> so how did the whole wild cherry uh, <clears throat> thing happen for you? Well, um, at the t- after the Jackers were done, that would have been like 1970. I don't know, 73 or so, somewhere in there. Sure. Um, the Jaggers were, you know, having limited success at the time, so, you know, guys in the band went to, went opposite directions, and I happened to be um, wanting to go into the studio and learn more about the studio. I'd become like a, 
an apprentice a engineer in the studio here back home and uh, Bobby Khaleesi and his band Watch A were going in to, re to record this was maybe a year after they had the success with uh, Play That Funky Music uh -huh. and uh, and it just so happened one of the guys in the band was leaving the band and Bobby you know uh, maybe a month after we did the recording asked me if I'd like to join the band go out and play um, you know, because they were going on the road, they needed a rhythm guitar player and background singer. I said, yeah, sure, man, I'll do it. So, I don't know, we spent maybe a year together, something like that, in the band, um, <coughs> oh. playing with Wild Charity. And those were great days, man. Really nice tours. And, uh, yeah, I had a blast with Bobby and the band. And I suppose because of the success of, of, of uh, the band, you, know, they, you guys got treated like, like royalty everywhere you went, I'm sure. Oh yeah, I mean everything was first class, man. We just uh, we just were having just a great time, and that song was so popular. I mean, geez, <laughs> I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's pro I think it was the biggest record that Epic ever had until uh, or CBS ever had until uh, Michael Jackson came along. Oh, probably. So that yeah. was a huge, huge hit record that played that funky music. <laughs> so big. <laughs> yeah, and, and I wonder why. I mean, did you ever want to stop and yeah, ask yeah. why? Yeah, you, you never know, Frank. You, yeah. you just don't know. It just <clears throat> happens. And that's what happened with the rapper. And I'm sure Bobby will probably tell you the same thing. Oh, I'm sure. With, uh, play that monkey music. Because I've always kind of wondered how how so certain songs get picked to be the hits. You know, when, when you got a like a like you got a lot of songs to choose from, and, and then you yeah. only have like three hits in your album. But how do they get? How does that get chosen? You know. Yeah, you just don't know, man. And, and we were turned down by uh, a bunch of record companies before we ever got a record contract uh, to do um, to do the rapper. I mean, like yeah. so many people just you know shut the door on us. But Neil Bogart, who worked with uh, uh, Blue Luther Records, uh, uh, signed us, and they said, "Yeah, we'll put the rapper out and see what happens." And you know, then the, the the rest was, as they say, history. Oh, it was just. It was just unbelievable. It just happened. And then finally, what happened to you after being in two big bands? You finally went on the road and, and did some solo. Well, uh, you had a solo career, yeah. but, but you called yourself Donnie Iris and the Cruisers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What happened there was when uh, when I, when Bob Sherry was finally done with, and I left that, you know, the band had broken up. The keyboard player in that band and I decided to get together to go in and do some recordings. That's Mark Avsek. He's still with me today. He's uh -huh. a, a keyboard player and producer for me. Um, we met up in Wild Cherry, went in the studio, I don't know, for maybe, we did maybe four or five tracks in the studio, and took it into Cleveland to, uh, uh, to the Belkin the Dury organization. And they liked it, and they said that, uh, you know, go ahead and finish everything else up and give us like 12 songs or so and so we went in and did the, did the whole record they put it out on their little label in, in Cleveland called Midwest Label at uh, the Midwest Label and that's what uh, that's that was the Back on the Streets album okay and uh, and we had success with that because we got picked up by a major label and MCA liked it so we started getting all kind of airplay on different in different cities and, and so we were able to um, get picked up by MCA Oh, cool. And, and, yeah, you know, yeah. and, 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 you know, I like I was telling you a couple of days ago uh, when I scheduled this interview with you, I have, uh, I'm have i really getting familiar with a lot of your songs because I I found you on Spotify. And that's a Facebook, uh, that's a Facebook yeah. app that uh, plays all types of radio, music, you know, songs, you know, whatever you want. You know, you don't have to download anything. It's just all all there. Facebook uh, has advertisements that, uh, that pay Spotify so to keep it free if you want it free. Anyway, uh, yeah. I found your your uh, an album. Anyway, uh, it's a greatest hits album. It's uh, the Millennium Collection album uh, that has yeah, you yeah, wear yeah. the red shirt yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm familiar with. Yeah, yeah, and I was listening to that, and man, I mean, I, I'm just blown away by what I what I've heard. <laughs> yeah, good man. Yeah, that was. Uh, um, yeah, they took a compilation of, of songs that we did from maybe I think three or four albums that we recorded for MCA. <laughs> 
and they put that Millennium thing together. And I think they did that for two or three, maybe four other bands as well. Oh yeah, I, I think a lot of a lot of bands. Uh, yeah, I don't know how many people how many uh, get that now because now they go from either uh, the Millennium Collection or to the Essential Collection now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was just kind of blown away by some of the songs that I heard, and, and I, I looked up some music videos of yours on YouTube. You got a lot of stuff on YouTube, uh, whether you yeah. know about it or not, yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you do. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know, yeah. Everybody had told me about it, so I went on there, and it was, yeah, it was a bunch of stuff on there, for sure. A bunch of old music videos that I'm sure take you way back, you know, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so, um... You you stayed with music and and uh, did you ever have any other like career choices of what you wanted to be when you grew up? Pretty much. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I I went to college initially to be a teacher. I mean, this was like the early '60s, and uh, and probably like the second or uh, my sophomore year in college was probably about the time that I thought that uh, you know that we um, that I was going to do. I didn't want to be a teacher. You know, yeah. I just thought I, I gotta, I gotta go back. I gotta get into music at full time. And uh, but yeah, initially I was going to be a teacher. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I can picture yeah. you. I can picture you being a teacher. You know, especially. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, back in those days, I'm sure being a teacher was probably the coolest thing ever compared to now. Where I don't know, it's a different world now. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Everybody had that welcome back Cotter spirit back in those days. <laughs> Oh, uh, boy. Yeah, I'm glad I, I'm, I'm sure glad I made the decision to just uh, stay in music and, uh, you know, just uh, because God, I've had a great time doing it, that's for sure. So, uh, 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 you got anything that you like to promote that you're doing right now at all? Well, we, we don't have anything out yet, but we're working on some things. I mean, it's, uh, um, we've got probably a half a dozen or so. Uh, tracks in the studio that we haven't finished up. We, you know, we still record, we still play once in a while, and we still, uh, you know, we still enjoy doing it. But we have um, uh, some ideas that we're putting together for next year. Next year, the band will have been together for thirty-five years. Oh wow! So yeah, I mean, we gotta have, we gotta do something special. Oh sure. Trying to think yeah. of a, a way to make uh, next year really, really something great for us. Maybe do a, a big show somewhere in Pittsburgh. Um, around Labor Day, somewhere around there, with uh, with a package put together of uh, maybe five or six or seven CDs and DVDs, and just all this stuff that we've done over the years, photos, right. and uh, you know, just put something special together for you know for the diehard fans uh, for next year. Oh, sure. Because we're still going to play. I mean, as long as people keep coming to see us, we're just we're keeping on keeping on keeping on. If you know what I mean. So, so yeah, so okay. we're gonna do keep we're gonna keep at it, man. So where would you suggest, like, if somebody wants to buy a, a CD of yours or a record of yours or whatever, uh, where would you suggest that person f uh, buy it from? Uh, geez, you know, the best thing is online, man. I mean, kind of people told me they found some really cool stuff on eBay and um, places like that. I mean, as far as like record stores and stuff, you hardly even hear any more about that kind of thing. But okay. yeah, most mostly through uh, uh, through the internet, like Amazon dot com, or you don't you don't really yeah, have yeah like, Amazon, eBay. You, you don't you don't yeah. have you don't have like a, a shop online thing on your website at all. Well, on our website, you can get uh, um, you can get some things on our website, but I mean to find some of the old stuff. Yeah, that uh, you know some of the old vinyl and stuff. That's all. God knows what happened, you know, to, to some <laughs> of those records. The, you know, online is the best place to find that. But yeah, you can get like T-shirts and stuff like that. And, uh, you know that kind of thing on oh, our sure. website. But uh, but you know what I mean. Yeah, the classic yeah. stuff. That oh you yeah. Find. Do you uh, yeah. in your own personal collection? Do you have a lot of the stuff that you've done in your collection? In your uh, own collection? You know what, Frankie? <laughs> I, most of the stuff that I have that. Uh, you know, some of that promotional stuff is, is what we use it for. I mean, we gave it away. We we gave away all that uh, all that stuff. I mean, I have a few things. Like I still have the uh, um, the jacket that I wore on the cover of uh, Back on the Streets. Huh. Um, I still have the guitar that I played. It's an old Stratocaster that's on that cover. Um, so yeah, I mean, I still have a lot of memorabilia, but. Uh, 
Um, but for the most part, a lot of those promotional things, like I say, if you're lucky enough to find the guys that are collectors can go online and find some really cool stuff. Oh, cool. All right, well, I tell you what, you know, it's been a thrill to, to talk to you. This is... Uh, this is definitely uh, one that I'll, I'll definitely never forget, and I, I'm honored the <laughs> fact that you're able to spend the time a little bit with me. And do uh, you got any? Are you playing it anywhere? I, I thought I saw a promotional thing for your uh, like uh, like you yeah. playing somewhere tomorrow, I think, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, we're up in a place called Sharon, Pennsylvania, tomorrow. Uh, they um, um, we have they have a uh, a big outdoor concert there tomorrow uh, that we're headlining with. Uh, I think four or five other bands. So okay. we're looking forward to that. The group hasn't been uh, hasn't done many shows this year. In fact, I think that's a, this is the first show that we've done this year so far. Huh. But uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to tomorrow night. All right. Well, I hope it goes good. Yeah. For you know, it's kind of cool that even at the age of seventy, that you're still able to rock and roll. So. Oh know. yeah, yeah. I mean, shit, we we still feel good, man. We <laughs> still get out there and play and. Uh, <laughs> The people keep coming, so we keep going, man. That's for sure. Hey, might as well be a rock and roller for the rest of your life, you know. Why not? <laughs> yeah, why not, man? There's nothing else that I can do, so we'll do that. All right, man. Well, you have a great time, a great day, and uh, thanks again for uh, for letting me do this interview with you. Yeah, thanks for having me, Frankie. Hey, Appreciate no problem. It, Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye bye. And that was the legendary music musician Donnie Iris. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that interview because tomorrow I get to talk to the guy that he worked with uh, on Wild Cherry, uh, the lead singer of that band, Rob Parisi. And uh, that should be a very, very fun interview as well. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I found uh, Donnie Iris' uh, Facebook page on, or on Facebook, and he does have a website that I'll put down the link below. And I uh, just want to say thank you to Donnie and... and uh, and uh, his uh, guy, Mike, that hooked us up with this interview and gave me his uh, cell phone number, and I appreciate it. It's uh, a lot of fun to be able to do... Uh, I haven't done a, a, an interview with, with a musician. Well, I did the interview with uh, Buddy Holly's brother, Larry Holly, but but uh, an actual musician, musician that's actually been on the road, you know, it's been a while since I've uh, talked to a, a musician. I don't remember the, actual, the last actual musician I interviewed. Unless there was a Kent Gustafson when we talked about the Doc Hendricks books, but that wasn't really... Or Doc Hendricks. Doc, <laughs> Doc Watson. Did I just say Doc Hendricks from WWF? Or a.k.a. the Fabulous Freebirds? Oh, and I'm still waking up. Anyway. <laughs> uh, well, uh, thank you guys again for tuning in for another great interview. Tune in to, uh, for another great interview tomorrow as we uh, wrap up my interview series for the first half of the summer anyway. Uh, because I will be moving to South Dakota here uh, this next coming week, so uh, might not have internet for a little while, so that's why I'm going to be taking a couple week break, but I'll try to find internet anywhere I can, uh, wherever I can. I'm sure I have a laptop, so I'm sure internet connections won't be hard to find. So anyway, Frank Slauson, and we'll see you next time for another great Frankie's Icons of Pop Culture series, summer interview series, as it's... Uh, became more of a success than I ever thought it would be. <laughs> so, thank you for that. <laughs>